Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for recommended practice number SNTTC 1A. Personnel Qualification and Certification in Non-Destructive Testing. In this lecture, we will discuss Clause 6, Education, Training, and Experience Requirements for Initial Qualification. In the following slides, we highlight important information contained in Clause 6 accompanied by the sub-clauses. Clause 6 – Education, Training, and Experience Requirements for Initial Qualification Candidates for certification in NDT should have sufficient education, training, and experience to ensure qualification in those NDT methods in which they are being considered for certification. Documentation of prior certification may be used by an employer as evidence of qualification for comparable levels of certification. Documented training and or experience gained in positions and activities comparable to those of levels 1, 2, and, or 3 prior to establishment of the employer's written practice, may be considered in satisfying the criteria of section 6.3. To be considered for certification, a candidate should satisfy one of the following criteria for the applicable NDT level NDT levels 1 and 2. Table 6.3.1a lists the recommended training and experience hours to be considered by the employer in establishing written practices for initial qualification of NDT level 1 and level 2 individuals. Table 6.3.1b lists initial training and experience hours, which may be considered by the employer for specific limited applications, as defined in the employer's written practice. Limited certifications should apply to individuals who do not meet the full training and experience of Table 6.3.1a. Limited certifications issued in any method should be approved by the NDT Level 3 and documented in the certification records. Table 6.3.1a lists recommended training and experience hours for initial qualification of NDT Level 1 and Level 2 individuals. Table 6.3.1a notes Person may be qualified directly to NDT Level 2, with no time as a certified NDT Level 1. Providing the recommended training and experience consists of the sum of the hours recommended for NDT Level 1 and Level 2. Listed training hours may be adjusted as described in the employer's written practice depending on the candidate's actual education level, for example grammar school, college graduate in engineering, etc. Training should be outlined in the employer's written practice. MT training hours may be counted toward MFL training hours as defined in employer's written practice. If an individual is currently certified in an ET technique, and a full course format was used to meet the initial qualifications in that technique, the minimum training hours to qualify in another ET technique at the same NDT level may be reduced up to 40%, if so defined in the employer's written practice. If an individual is certified in an ET technique, 
The minimum experience to qualify for another ET technique at the same level, or to the next level, may be reduced by up to 50% if so defined in the employer's written practice. While fulfilling total NDT experience requirement, experience may be gained in more than one method. However, the minimum hours must be met for each method. Full matrix capture, time of flight diffraction, and phased array ultrasonic testing require ultrasonic testing level 2 certification as a prerequisite. For NDT Level 3 certification, the experience should consist of the sum of the hours for NDT Level 1 and Level 2, plus the additional time in 6.3.2 as applicable. The formal training should consist of the NDT Level 1 and Level 2 training, plus any additional formal training as defined in the employer's written practice. Please return to SNTTC1A and read full table 6.3.1A notes. Table 6.3.1B Recommended initial training and experience levels for NDT Level 2 limited certifications. NDT Levels 3 have a bachelor's degree or higher in engineering or science plus one additional year of experience beyond the level 2 requirements in NDT in an assignment comparable to that of an NDT Level 2 in the applicable NDT methods or have completed with passing grades at least two years of engineering or science study at a university, college, or technical school, plus two additional years of experience beyond the NDT Level 2 requirements in NDT in an assignment, at least comparable to that of NDT Level 2 in the applicable NDT methods, or have four years of experience beyond the NDT Level 2 requirements in NDT in an assignment, at least comparable to that of an NDT Level 2 in the applicable NDT methods. Please note that NDT Level 3 requirements may be partially replaced by experience as a certified NDT Level 2, or by assignments at least comparable to NDT Level 2, as defined in the employer's written practice. Review questions Question number 1. The recommended experience for a person being qualified directly to level 2, with no times as a level 1, providing Answer is A. Question number 2. For SNTTC1A, listed training hours may be adjusted, as described in the employer's written practice depending on Answer is D. Question number 3. Per SNTTC1A, if an individual is currently certified in an ET technique, and a full course format was used to meet the initial qualifications in that technique, 
the minimum training hours to qualify in another ET technique at the same NDT level may be Answer is B. Question number four. For SNTTC1A. For an individual with a Bachelor of Science degree. What is the minimum number of months experience as a level 2 or needed to qualify for level 3 certification? Answer is A. Question number 5. For SNTTC1A, the minimum requirements for an NDT Level 3. Answer is D. Question number 6. For SNTTC1A. Time of flight diffraction and phased array certification requires. Answer is A. Question number 7. Certified RT Level 1 worked 20% of each month performing RT and the remaining 80% in other NDT methods per SNTTC1A. What experience is required to achieve RT Level 2 certification? Answer is A. Question number 8. In evaluating qualifications in accordance with SNTTC1A, you find that an individual has limited familiarity with the method in which certification is sought. What action should you take? Answer is D. Question number 9. In accordance with SNTTC1A, a college graduate with a four-year degree in business administration would need how many months of NDT Level 2 experience to become a NDT Level 3? Answer is B. Question number 10. Certified RT Level 1 worked 20% of each month for 3 months in RT. 
If the remainder of the time was spent performing level 2 duties in PT, how much experience can be claimed toward the experience recommended for level 2 RT in accordance with SNTTC1A? Answer is A. Question number 11. SNTTC1A recommends that the NDT level 3 candidate should meet which of the following minimum requirements? Answer is A. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile. <laughs>